Thank you very much, PM. This award is not only yours, but it's an award for the country. And I dare say that the eyes of the world, those that were still closed, will now open up to find out who is this leader from this small, tiny, unknown country who can rise to be counted among some of the greatest leaders this universe, this planet, have ever seen. Thank you, Prime Minister. We are going to bless you and bless your family for the support that they have given you along this journey. And may your life be lengthened and your vision and your wisdom continue to grow that you can take this country to a much better place. Thank you. God bless you. Our thanks to Honorable Ostry for his remarks. And at this time, I ask you to join me as we invite and welcome the Honorable Prime Minister, the recipient of the Order of Jose Marti, to address us. The reality is, uh, those who know me very well I uh, would know that I would have come in quietly and, and simply head home, you know. But I want to thank all of you for being here. I want to recognize uh, our senior minister, Honorable Reginald Ostry, our speaker of the House of Assembly, Honorable Joseph Isaac, uh, and of course, all of my cabinet and parliamentary colleagues who are present here, uh, members of the diplomatic corps, uh, Ms. Corinne Privo, the, the cabinet secretary, Ms. Dennis Edwards, the financial secretary, uh, permanent secretaries, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, Ms. Um, Mrs. Jira Smith, our moderator. I, I want to thank all of you for the very warm welcome, and, and certainly it makes my homecoming all the more special and significant to be among you, uh, my peers, who continue to stand firmly with me in the governance of our beautiful country, Dominica. Indeed, I feel a deep sense of honor and pride and a profound sense of humility to have received this award from the government and people of Cuba. The Order of Jose Marti holds immense significance for the people of Cuba, and I was humbled to be considered worthy of such a magnificent tribute. Jose Marti, the national hero of Cuba, embodied his country's fight for independence, for self-determination, and for the autonomy to map the destiny, free from the ties of the colonial past. After the three days spent in Cuba, I can tell you that the sentiments of pride and patriotism are as dominant in the Cuban people today as when Marty advocated for moral and ethical values, cultural enlightenment, and independence for Cuba in the late 19th century. The award was a resounding vote of confidence in my advocacy at the local, regional, and international levels to advance the, free freedom, the freedoms of people everywhere. As an ardent advocate of wider regional integration, I have taken pride in helping to foster closer ties between CARICOM states and countries of Latin America. And the government of Dominica has certainly been consistent in our calls for the Cuban people and state to be allowed their rightful place. <laughs> to be allowed their rightful place among our family of nations. I am gratified that I, and by extension, the government and people of Dominica have been recognized for our sincere efforts in that regard. The reality is I, I accept this award on behalf of every single Dominican. <laughs> I grabbed the opportunity to express our profound gratitude for Cuba's deep and unwavering commitment to the well-being of the Dominican people. Cuba's economy, as we all know, has been severely impacted by the imposition of a six-decade-long blockade by the United States. On behalf of the government and people of Dominica, I pledged our unwavering solidarity and support for Cuba in the international arena. And for resolutions which advance the country's development and safeguard the rights and interests of the Cuban people. 
I give the President, His Excellency Diaz Bermudez, the assurance that we will continue to advocate for the normalization of relations with Cuba and the lifting of sanctions for enhanced peace, stability, and economic growth. Despite the substantial disadvantages, disadvantages of the economic embargo, Cuba continues to provide valuable support and assistance to Dominica and to many of our counterparts in the region. I refer to the many years of collaboration between our two states in the areas of education, health, culture, and social services. Through the Dominica Cuba Scholarship Program, launched in November 1979, hundreds of Dominicans have received professional training in Cuba in various fields of study. The Cuban graduates are accredited as major contributors to Dominica's social and economic development and have changed the country's intellectual and professional landscape. Many Cuban graduates, among them doctors, vets, dental surgeons, foresters, agronomists, architects, and civil engineers, hold key positions within the private and public sectors in Dominica while others are building careers in countries around the world. Several doctors currently on staff at our national hospital are Cuban trained, many of whom have pursued specialty degrees in various arms of medicine and now form the pillar of our health system. Following the devastation of Tropical Storm Erica in 2015, Hurricane Maria in 2017, and now a global pandemic, Cuba has supported Dominica with the deployment of health professionals, including nurses, doctors, and lab technicians, to assist in the administration of care and the management of COVID-19. Last year, our respective ministries of health signed a new cooperation agreement, further cementing our long-standing collaboration in the, matter, in the areas of health and serving as another example of the excellent bilateral relations we enjoy. These contributions are indeed significant, and I assured the Cuban authorities of our commitment to even closer ties and collaboration in the areas of culture, education, health, agriculture, and disaster mitigation. We agreed to embrace an even brighter future for Cuba-Dominica relations. While in the Spanish-speaking country, the Dominican delegation met for a number of Dominican students, and I listened closely to accounts of their experiences. They were assured of our firm support as they continue to pursue studies with hopes of returning to their home country to build progressive lives, assist their families, and contribute to national development. My dear friends, my focus as leader of this country remains on the creation of opportunities for all our people to thrive and achieve their dreams for better lives. Once again, I thank all of you for being here to offer your support. I feel your pride and the pride of the Dominican people in this honor that has been conferred on me. I must tell all of you that I am equally proud of you, of our collective efforts as a people and nation to confront adversity and emerge triumphant time and time again. Like the Cuban people, we have demonstrated that we are imbued with an en enduring pride, determination, and an inner strength to succeed. I say to our young people in Dominica that your circumstance in life should not determine your future. You need to ensure that the opportunities that you have, you take advantage of it. You don't have to go look far. Look at Roosevelt's carrot, and you will make a determination for yourself. <laughs> And I said to my colleagues, we have work to do. Let us continue to work together to better the lives of the Dominican people. That's our mission, and that's our commitment. But we also have a commitment to the rest of the world to ensure that peoples everywhere of the world can be given a decent opportunity to a decent life. And I know tonight we will be at the stadium. And so at the stadium, I shall give a political speech. <laughs> I shall give a political speech because there are some things I will say at the stadium I can't say here. <laughs> but I am happy to be back here. And um, for me, it was a sense of 
of, of profound humility. And I can say to, to, the, to the world that when I was informed by the Cuban authorities through the ambassador resident Dominica that the president had taken, had issued a decree to bestow this on me. It took me a couple of days before I said yes to the ambassador. Because what I do is not for any recompense. I do it as a matter of principle. And I do it as a commitment, not only to our Dominican people, but to the rest of the world. And the Lord has placed me in a position, and that's what I'm doing to advance his work on earth. I say to everybody that I'm just an instrument doing the Lord's work, and this is what we continue to do. Question for the Prime Minister is, Prime Minister, you've received several awards over the years. Where does this one fit in terms of importance as far as we're concerned? Well, I, I appreciate any comment, every commendation. It could be from someone who I meet on the farm or I meet on the streets, um, you know, I, I appreciate this. We, as I said, we don't, we don't in, the, in, our, in the government, in the lower party, we don't do anything for, for any reward, any commendation. We do so because this is our duty, our, our obligation, and our commitment to the people. Um, and our party is, 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 has been founded on those principles. Um, for, for, for one to for one to appreciate this uh, award, I mean, you have received one um, in our country, so, and, and I'm sure you understand. Um, I, I'm sure you know how your family and everybody felt that you were recognized by your country. Um, it, it is one thing also to be recognized by your country, but it's also another thing to be recognized by another country. And the and Jose Marti, if we read up on Jose Marti, we understand. Um, how the Cuban people, and indeed the entire Latin America, view Jose Mati for his fight for independence and and, um, and and justice and peace. And so Jose Mati is Cuba's national hero. He's revered among every Cuban national. And uh, Cuba is made up of millions of people. Um, and for um, a young boy from the village of Vegas to be recognized by, by the Cuban people in that regard, um, certainly is, is, is something worth um, So, so it, it is, it, it is um, certainly a, a, a huge accolade to have been bestowed upon me by, by the Cuban people. Just a follow-up question, because to the most last point. How can you use this award? Influence well, the 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 award is a recognition of what we've been doing. Um, is a recognition of what we've been doing over the last twenty years. Um, our commitment to integration, to peace, to justice um, is uncompromising. These are principles that we stand strong to. We don't, we don't negotiate in those principles. We negotiate words, as I keep saying, but we don't negotiate those principles. And every, every human being, that's what Christ lived for, to, to, to deal with issues of injustice and, and peace. And, 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 and if we want, we have to seek to emulate those things. And, and so um, it, it certainly will strengthen my resolve to do this. Um, when you... People will know that when you stand on principle, sometimes you you become a target, and I've become a target in many instances by, you know, certain certain. We don't even talking about you know. <laughs> um, but that that should not that should not cause one to to lose sight of his or her commitment to this. So um, it is certainly going to strengthen my resolve for this, and. Um, and, and so it, it, I, I thank the Cuban people for, for the recognition of, of the work that we have been doing, because I, I'm doing this work on behalf of the government of Dominica. OK. Um, the first question, I mean, this, our position on calling, calling on the United States to remove the embargo on Cuba is not an anti-America position. 
and that's the confusion people have. Um, it's an anti-American position. So clearly, the, the entire world, as a matter of fact, at the United Nations consistently, for the last 10 or so years, only two countries have voted against the removal of the, of the embargo against Cuba. That is the United States and Israel. So the entire world, and if you do a poll in the United States of America, you'll find that the majority of American citizens will tell you that this embargo should be removed. So it's, 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 a, it's an issue of, of, of injustice and the need for the Cuban people to really um, be afforded the opportunity to, to be part of the world system. Because you know, everything goes for the US dollar, the SWIFT code and all these things. Um, and to be part of the mainstream um, economic system. And if you look at what Cuba has been able to do under the embargo, in terms of its um, in, in areas of science, especially health sciences, the deployment of um, people throughout the world, especially in disaster times. A lot of young people do not know Cuba played a huge role in the apartheid period in, in supporting Nelson Mandela and the ANC. Cuba helped um, um, in Angola to independence. Um, Cuba helped in, in um, what was called Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe. You know, and, and, and all of the African states benefited from Cuban's contribution to their independence and their, their, their fight for self-determination. And, and here in the Caribbean, every single country, if you were to remove Cuban trained doctors and Cuban doctors from the health system of every Caribbean country, with no exception, um, the health systems will collapse. I'm, I'm saying Cuban trained, not only not Cuban doctors, but Cuban trained citizens of the Caribbean who were trained in Cuba. If you were to withdraw the services, the health system will collapse. And when you look at the sheer value of those scholarships, you, you can understand the contribution that Cuba is making to, to, to our country. And we are not in the CARICOM supporting Cuba on their call on our call to remove the embargo because of what we receive. No. We are doing so as a matter of principle. As a matter of fact, this year will be 50 years um, since um, um, CARICOM Cuba relations with, um, with the pioneers, Barbados, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana um, defying the, the international order at the time and establishing relations with Cuba. So we have 50 years of relationship that we've had within, within CARICOM. And the reality is if you have a brother who is in difficulty, what do you do? You know? Um, and, and if you have a brother who has been oppressed, what do you do? What do you say? Okay, so it's not, um, it's not an anti-America position. It's a matter of justice and, and, and fairness. And that's, that's all. As a matter of fact, this afternoon we have the meetings. I have to live in a while. I have, we have, CARICOM has a meeting with the Vice President of the United States on, on a number of issues here today.